Every day okay, in we the now USA, call people uh, find Charlie themselves Price? in a port. Not Charlie Price. Not Charlie, Charlie Price. Price. 23 cr 804. These are the probable causes of all the three misdemeanors that are relevant to when you're looking at the this decision, Judge. Twenty three CR eight zero four is called uh, the state of Texas versus Charlie Edge Vice. That is you He's present with your attorney, Mr. Reynolds, and the state's attorney. We are here on what says bond hearing. What is the defense bond now? He has no he has no bond. Just to refresh your memory, that's because he removed his GPS device, Judge. Previously, oh. uh, before that, it was at 30 and it was bumped to 60,000 at the time he removed his GPS device. Okay, did I do that? Um, uh, yes, sir. Because there's nothing on the file that reflects I, I've done anything in this trial, in this case. It's but we had a hearing and... It's my understanding, Judge, that he was... The original bond was set by Judge DeRuin, according to the description of my client at the jail. And then sometime after that, the uh, bond was increased by Judge Collins, I believe. 60, Sir? Judge Collins increased his bond. To what? 60000 And required that he had an ankle monitor. Now, Mr. Thereafter. Uh, thereafter, he... Uh, well, I, 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 according to... His testimony, he was never admonished directly by Judge Collins. However, he did receive the bond conditions, and uh, he, he admits to removing the ankle monitor. He has never been admonished uh, in person, I don't believe, by a judge. I believe if you admonish him and set a reasonable bond, he will adhere to the bond conditions. And that's what we're asking you to do today, Judge. Okay. I'm looking at the condition of bond that was signed by Judge Collins. GPS ankle monitor, no contact with victim, remain in Jefferson County. That was signed on June 14th of 2023. So the defendant then acquires an ankle monitor thereafter. And, and the emergency protective order that he had is alleged to have violated in two of those misdemeanor cases before you judge. Um, and I will point out, you know, that one of those misdemeanor cases predates the felony that you're dealing with, and it all relates to the same victim. And to answer your normal question, Judge, I've been in constant contact with her, including today. She's still moving forward with the prosecution and voluntarily assisting us with everything. All right, the court <clears throat> has reviewed the indictment here pending, which alleges that on or about June 10th, 2023 in Jefferson County, Texas, the defendant intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly caused serious bodily injury to the complainant. And the defendant used a deadly weapon, namely a hard object with a sharp edge that was capable of causing serious bodily injury or death during the commission of the assault and that the defendant and the complainant were in a dating relationship at the time. And this alleges a first degree felony of aggravated assault. So the defendant is looking at no less than five, no more than 99 years old life in prison that if convicted. There are two other pending charges. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's the violation of protective orders alleged to have occurred. Well, actually, three, Judge. There's two since the our, our indictment. Chronologically. Two since this indictment? Yes, sir. Chronologically, there was a, a assault causing bodily injury misdemeanor alleged from August 13, 2021, with this same victim misdemeanor number M3304. 499-0. Then we get 
the felony charge, which results in an emergency a magistrate's emergency temporary protective order lasting 90 days. He is alleged to have violated that protective order in two different cause numbers. 23 CCCR 1687, offense date July 23rd, 2023, and 23 CCCR 1925, offense date August 28th, Again, all the same victim. I have a, a third probable I provided cause you in 2021 that occurred in 2021 where it appears as though the same parties were involved in an assault. He was granted uh, what happened a pre-trial version on that and he didn't complete the pre-trial diversion so he filed the assault case. The pre-trial diversion was interrupted by and what happened offense. here? Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't know what happened with the pre-trial but I know that uh, he was uh, since I mean, he was terminated. You know, I'm checking Joseph's first statement on pre-trial. That's why that was so late. Mm -hmm. I don't have any information that's Okay. Let me get the timing on all of this again. All right. We start, I guess, I have matter that apparently occurs in 2021. Does that result in some kind of court orders? It's still pending, Judge. That, that's the only announcement I can give you. No, I'm talking about that. when do the orders come about that result in some of these other that new comes cases. from your felony, Judge. Whenever he's arrested on July 14th for the felony of what in year? Front of, you, what, 23? Uh, of 23, that gives that they put in place a 90 day magistrate's uh, protective order. And it's that order that he's alleged to violate the, in the two other misdemeanor cause numbers that, that I just recited. Okay. The uh, events on July 23rd, 2023, and on August 28th, 2023. Yes, sir. Okay. And then... I think I understand... Where we are currently, his bond is no bond. That's no correct, bond. Judge. But, but who did I revoke that, or did somebody else revoke that? I don't have any. Don't you have did, any Judge. I, we, we issued a warrant. Um, and it had to do with us gaining information that he had removed the GPS device. Correct. So oh, we yes. issued a warrant January 10th of this year for at large without proper bond and we set the bond at no bond. Okay. Did he miss a uh, a date? No, no sir. No, sir. He just we didn't know where he was because because of that is I was in contact with his then attorney, Eric Franklin, and it was uh my understanding was based upon his communications, but she didn't tell me what the communications were that it was Based upon that, that he filed a motion to withdraw, and we now have a new attorney. All right, I think I know where we are. Okay, who wants to go first? Your motion. My motion is that uh, the court set reasonable bond, uh, make uh, reasonable requirements to bond, and uh, admonish him on the importance of uh, following the bond conditions. Why would I do that? Hadn't he already been admonished the well, importance of bond I, I, conditions I, by other judges? Well, that's what my point was. Even though he got a copy of the bond conditions, I don't think he was. He can't read. I'm just saying that he, he was. I don't believe he was personally admonished by the judge. 
And yes, he can read. He he admits to what he did was wrong. He would like to uh, uh, get his his, his wife. Uh, even though he can't. Do you want to put on any evidence, or do you want do you want to just do with this all articulating it from you? Uh, I, I, do you want I, to put him on at all, uh, or not? No, sir. Okay. All right. I got a little to go on, except what's being told to me here. The I I don't know. If we have a protective order. First of all, the defendant's charged with serious crime of violence, family violence, first degree felonies, looking at life imprisonment. So, protective order is in place. Then he does two things he removes GPS device and apparently ass assaults the complainant. The assaults on the complainant are going to be from August of 2021 and June of 2023. I don't have a June of 20. That is your felony, That's Judge, June 14. What about August 28, 23 and June 23rd, 23? It's uh, it's August and July of 23 that are violations August of and July. protective order. That, those are not, um, I, I have no reason to believe that there was any violent assaults at that time, Judge. Just the just the violation of the protective board. In what way? Uh, if I remember the, I, I read those before I handed them to you. I believe, Judge, that he was at the residence on both those occasions. On uh, one occasion, the officer spotted the car that he recognized um, and he uh, went there and he tried to leave the scene. The officer stopped him. That led to that arrest. On the other case, wait, wait, how the, far? How? Where? Oh, okay, on J July twenty third of twenty twenty three. What is your information? Where was the defendant at one twenty three in the morning? He was uh, at her. He was at the residence, Judge, which is covered by the protective order. On both instances. Okay, so. Attempted to leave, a traffic stop was conducted, and he was detained. Yes, sir. And then on transported the... and then released to the custody of the jail staff. August 28th. She spies him outside the house, calls the cops, they come, they see, they they find him and arrest him in that regard. Again, all in violation. So the, the argument already that they've made that he didn't know about it. I mean, common sense tells you when you get arrested in, in July. You sure shouldn't be back in August doing it. That's what common sense tells me. Wait, wait. There's more than that. It says he had climbed into the house. Oh, yes, sir. And was she saw house. him on she saw him on the outside. When the officers get there, they come in and they find him on the inside. You know, you're gonna get to say all you want to say here in a minute. I'm just trying to get what the facts are. And this is again this a second event after. July 14th, within five or six weeks. No, no, I'm sorry. One, the first event is within nine days of the magistrate's order. I don't think that's July 23rd of 2023. The order is on July 14th of 23. Y'all told me the magistrates. I think that order is June 14th, Judge. Yes, sir. That protective order starts on June 14th. I, I won't be wrong for so many. June 14th, but and he is three, there. three weeks later, three okay. weeks later, I'm sorry, five weeks later, he is inside the house. Yes, sir. No, I'm sorry. I'm gonna that's the argument. No, he's, he's at 123. He's seen at the at the house and park. attempted to leave, and a traffic stop was uh, conducted. He is prohibited from going within 200 feet of the residence, and he was within 200 feet of the residence at 123 in the morning. Next is. On August 28th, which would be a little over uh, about 
nine or 10 weeks after the protective order and about five weeks after the first event that they caught him near the house violating the protective order at 6.20, 6.41 p.m. The defendant is found inside the home where he wasn't supposed to be and was placed under arrest. He had climbed through the window of the residence and placed in arrest, uh, under arrest then. And the indictment alleges that the defendant had uh, caused uh, serious, uh, well, it is alleged that he caused serious bodily injury to the defendant by causing okay. a, a, by, uh, the complainant by causing a severe laceration to the complainant's head with the use of a deadly weapon, some sort of a object with a sharp edge. And the uh, complainant was uh, discovered bleeding profusely from an injury to her forehead after the stabbing. which resulted in the protective order, which then later resulted in two violations of that protective order by the defendant being at or in the house on two separate occasions. What's the defendant's criminal history, please? Does anybody help me on that? Right the record does show some arrest, Judge, but let me get you detail. I know you want detail. Yes. So you got some pretrial diversion for a family violence back in 2015 in McKinney, in Collin County. Same county dealt with a DWI where he received probation. He was charged, and I repeat charged, with an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon in 2016 in Plano that was subsequently dismissed a year later. We have this 2021 incident with the same parties and assault. We dealt with the violation of protective order from that uh, instances in 2016, which was also dismissed. Then we have the 8-13-2021 case that's, uh, I will tell you that the possession of control substance that arose out of that, that was dismissed because he provided proof of a prescription but he's got the pending charge for the assault misdemeanor. Is that pending? Yes, sir. That's okay. Pending. That's one of those uh, probable cause warrant uh, affidavits I gave the judge. So the only conviction looks to be is that DWI. Or... What are we suggesting? Charlie, Mr. you understand that all your legal problems have seemed to stem from the relationship with your yes, sir. and the orders that have been put on you by the court are 
trying to keep you and your wife or ordering you and your wife not to have any contact. Understood. And uh, I'm going to object to that word. Yeah, it's, it's more it's like the, don't well, assault her. Well, uh, well, is well, kind well, of that's well, it's the well, protective. It's well, protecting well, her, but not but you, him. But you understand you're not to have any contact with her through those orders. Yes, sir. And now they're alleging that you violated those orders, and that's also the condition condition of your bond that you uh, make it violate. You understand that. Yes, sir. And, 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 and well, the, and the uh, repeated, or maybe at, at this point, uh, you know, the judge is certainly within the, the court's uh, uh, discretion to hold you without bond because of those violations. You understand that? Have you ever been admonished that uh, by a judge before? Your Honor, before I, I want him, he needs to be sworn in if he's going to give those kind of answers. Because now he's he's challenging the integrity of a judicial officer, and I want to make sure that that's under a. Uh, raise your right. You solemnly swear or affirm any statements you make during this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, sir. Lower your hand. Your full name again is. Charlie Ed Price the Third. All right, the defendant in this case. Okay. You're under oath, so you have to tell the truth. Yes, sir. Go uh, ahead. Yeah, thank you. Was that your signature on the on the bond and the and the protective? You understand? Yes, this? sir. But my question was: did, did the judge talk to you about that, or did you just serve with that? I was served with it. I never spoke with Judge Collins. It was my arraignment judge called me back in after the thirty thousand dollar bond was set, and he said that that a a, a a judge from the outside was stepping on the, in on his arraignment and had made my bond 60000 and that there was a protective order issued. A gentleman came in and handed that to me and had, made, had me sign that. But, but you had notice of the protective order? Yes, sir. Uh, and I'm going to advise you to remain silent about the facts of the cases in which you're charged, but for here today, uh, if the judge would set a bond for you, would you adhere to all the bond conditions? Absolutely, and I'll never break a order again. Would, would you, one of the bond conditions would certainly be that you uh, uh, purchase and have installed a VPS monitor. Yes, sir. And one of the conditions would be that you have no contact whatsoever, either through you or through anybody else, with your wife. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I will not contact her. I, I mean, I mean not, not have anybody else contact her on the brand. Am I allowed to give her money monthly uh, into her account, or should I have that? I don't want to do anything. But it, it says you cannot contact her. Yes. And you can't have anybody contact her on your behalf. Yes, sir. And, and, and will you do that? Can you do that? Absolutely, sir. And uh, if uh, also the bond guarantees your appearance in court. Yes, sir. Uh, will, will you be here and make all your court dates? Absolutely, sir. And are you asking the judge to set a bond to you? Please, sir. So you can go out and, and you need to earn money. Without contacting her, you can put money in her account and provide for her. And my kids. Yes, sir. And, your, and that's what you'd like. Yes, sir. And uh, we will uh, proceed with the disposition of these cases either through. Where were you when you cut your GPS device off? And you were under conditions that you were not to leave the cabin. Wait, wait, wait. What was your answer to that question? Where were you? I went to see my son. But where were you? You said you went to see. Where were you when you cut it off? At uh, the hotel I was staying at in Dallas. Well, what was that hotel? It's called uh, the um, Fairfield Inn. And where is it located in Dallas? Just uh, right at 635 and 35. At the airport? Uh, no, sir. Uh, the airport's at um, 21. It's uh, 35, which is um, Highway 35 and 635, right at that juncture. The judge asked you all that because the GPS information said that you were at the airport in a rental car when you actually cut the device. The airport is uh, 15 to 20 miles. Uh, were you in a rental car? Yes, sir. My car's You're just denying there. you were at the airport? I, my my uh, car was stolen from uh, me here in Belmont. I had an accident on um, Dowland. 
I wrecked my truck. So back up to whenever you were arrested for the protective order, and I don't want you to make any statements about the cases one way or the other, but when you were arrested, you were arrested on that date, correct? Which date, sir? For the for the first violation of protective order, you were arrested for that charge, right? Yes, sir. So you agree with me that that gave you notice that you were violating a protective order? Yes, sir. And you agree with me that you were arrested in August for the same offense, being at back at the same place? You're not going to dispute the fact you were arrested on that date, are you? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I said I was wrong. And I, made I don't, I don't have any other questions of this defendant. Well, you know, you knew that people took action, serious action, in response to your actions. So it's being treated seriously from the beginning. When you cut, how did you cut your ankle monitor off? Uh, hmm? I'm sorry. A pair of snips from the Home Depot. You bought some snips from the Home Depot and cut them off? Yes, sir. It was after my, I called the bond. Is that right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. I don't have any additional questions of this witness, Judge. I have an argument whenever that's appropriate. Okay. There's a condition of bond here that I was signed on June 14th of 2023 by Judge Collins, and it says there is a condition attached to the bond on Charlie Ed Price, who is in custody and charged with aggravated assault, date, family house, weapon, with weapon. And it was based upon warrant number 23, JP-00504. And then it states, GPS ankle monitor, no contact with victim, remain in Jefferson County, Texas, or remain in Jefferson County. So you knew those were three conditions of bond. I never received that document. Okay. Here's the way this works is that when yeah. the JP signs this, then he sends it to the sheriff and the sheriff makes sure that the sheriff or some one of her deputies makes sure that you are aware of it. That's the way that works. And they've always done their job. Huh? Yes, sir. I, I, if I, I made a mistake and I'm sorry, I'll never. Well, wait, which, it. which, this solitary mistake that you made, which one of those are there? Because I see several here. Yeah. See, you minimize everything. I'm not minimizing. I, I'm saying you said a mistake. I'm looking at several mistakes here. What is the sole mistake you made? Or were there more than one mistake? More than one mistake. Okay. All right. See, just. This would not be the time that you should be, you want to be caught not being completely frank and truthful. Yes, sir. What mistakes did you make? I violated the protective order that I received in the jail uh, by going to my house. Uh, and then I violated it again by going back to the house. And after I... When I, uh, I uh, made another error by cutting my ankle monitor off because I thought it was over with, and that was not well, wait, correct. You, thought, I probably, what, I probably you thought what was over with? My protective order. Who, who said it was over? The 90 days was, uh, and I, in turn, violated an order, and that has me where I'm at, and it's all my fault. Mm -hmm. okay. I do want to correct that statement there is a 90-day magistrate protective order but the bond conditions were that he was to have no contact and maintain the gps that may have been the reason why he did it but i just want to be clear with the court on that when was the gps cut uh my memory is that that was uh january uh, this year but still in the end december 18th Okay. Um, on January 18th. December. 
December okay. 18th. Huh? He's saying December 18th. That's probably accurate. The these uh, orders, on these the orders that were put in place by the Justice of the Peace, they, they, um, Judge Collins, and again, that was, we're talking about June 14th, I think. Uh, 23. Anyway, June 14th, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, those, um, when in fact he gets invited on June 28th, 2023, then <clears throat> what are my bond conditions? What are my bond conditions come into play, please? Uh, we issued the warrant at large without proper on January 10th, probably after we got notification when they found the rental car with the GPS in the back seat. Hold on, wait a second. But there was an indictment handed up on June 28th. We what are Oh, oh, the original. June 28th. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm talking about that. It's upside down. Um, the original bond was off the indictment. So, yeah. I didn't change the bond conditions. No, sir, but at some point in time, I filed a motion to increase his bond. I'm seeing a date on that. In October of 2023, that was probably because of the two violations in the protective order. So, um, actually, Judge Collins did one off the original in June of 23. Yes, we know about that. June 14th, actually. Okay, you have that one. Okay. Yes. That was the GPS in the Jefferson County Don't Leave and all that. Um, for 60000 And then we did ours. On our second warrant, which was the one January 10th. Okay. What about the conditions? Okay. This Ben Collins bond, there's not, a, somebody's talking, somebody's saying that that's only good for 90 days. That's not right, is it? Not the bond, the bond, just the, the protective order. The protective things. order. Yes, sir. Bond conditions, though, continue. Yes, sir. The ankle yes, monitor and um, the other conditions. That the magistrate had set. Once again, I refer to the rules. It'll be June 14th of 23. Dated June 14th. And that was the bond amount of sixty thousand. June fourth, also on June fourteenth. GPS, no contact with the victim, remain in Jefferson County. Well, in all cases, it's posted. Everybody knows uh, it's posted on all uh, on. It's website, the court's website, here in the posting area of public public domain. But and your bondsman is responsible for telling you, keeping you updated with bond conditions, and all bond conditions are normal and customary, which is don't commit any crimes. That's the first one, uh, and a violation of an order would be subjecting you to uh, criminal contempt. Then if it's other conditions uh, like having a GPS ankle monitor, unless and until the a magistrate orders that to be released, it continues. And for good reason, here it is. That's so something terrible doesn't happen when you're charged with a crime. What the whole idea of the law is, is to freeze the action. Maintain a status quo. No further harm can happen to either party if, as long as that is obeyed. Otherwise, the worst thing we have is when you've got a pending case, you've been brought before magistrate, you've been lectured and 
it's been ordered that you uh, not only comply with certain conditions, but it's made clear that we take this seriously. And the rule of law is going to be firmly applied. When you go and violate your, your conditions by twice going to her house, twice in just a matter of weeks from each other, and then cutting off the ankle monitor when you are in Dallas. And was, was there any limit for staying in Jefferson County? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. And I believe you've already detailed that into the record, Judge, if I remember right. So we've got four things that are uh, at least four that are major conditions that are applicable really for everybody in this situation and or treated seriously when there are violations of it. Okay. Article 17.15 of the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure really is the key rule on rules for setting the amount of bond. Bail and any conditions of bail shall be sufficient to give reasonable assurance that the undertaking will be complied with. That is, the safety of the community and the rules will be followed, which you pretty much messed up on. The nature of the offense and the circumstances under which the offense are committed are to be considered. This is a very serious situation. Number one, it's involving a familial relationship where there is a violence, a violence perpetrated by one party to another. Well, it's, it's been historical that our country uh, has based much of its law on ensuring the safety of the community, but just morally based, which most laws are, a family is a very special relationship, which is not to be treated with violence, but understanding and love. And this is no way to treat someone who's a family member, according to these allegations. And I'm reading the probable cause affidavit. She was stabbed in her forehead and had stitches and some stabbing instrument, sharp edge was used according to this indictment. This is a first degree felony, so you're facing up to life in prison. So the law specially treats familial harm done because we like to preserve families <laughs> and when they can sometimes it can't be done but it's still a family you don't have any children common children we each have a child from the first marriage and my wife has been do you have a common the, child no, between no sir and only okay. out of the mental hospital i didn't do this sir when you were in the hospital why well, no sir we i said that my wife is struggling mentally. She's been out in and out of the mental facility. Which one? The one you assaulted? Yes. I didn't assault my wife. No, it, the grand jury says you did. Okay, but I didn't assault okay. my okay. wife. Okay, but probably... She's been in and out okay. of the mental The grand facility. jury believes probably you did it. So there's probable cause. So uh, You're presumed innocent because you hadn't been proven to have done it beyond a reasonable doubt. But probable cause exists and that's why I understand that's what, what it saying, takes but I did not do that i'm just trying to stay you're gonna interrupt, me. Is in you're, you're gonna interrupt. we can't she can't take everything yeah, that's all she did. when that's all. when we're both speaking over each yes, other sir. and the law says if she can't do it the people who get who are preventing her from doing her job they each get in trouble and i'm going to point out for the record i don't intend to be the one in trouble on this one because if anything is reviewed from a hearing, when it says parties are speaking over each other, then the reviewing court gets very upset. They want to know, well, we can't do our job with everybody's in a row. You're going to get a fair opportunity to be heard. You're going to get to go last. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, but let me just uh, talk about the conditions here, and then you can respond in your turn. So... Uh, the nature of the offense and the circumstances under which the offense are committed to, are to be considered. And once again, this is not based upon beyond a reasonable doubt. This is based upon what the accusation is and what's been proven. 
that we can see from the reading of probable cause affidavits. And the grand jury states that you've assaulted the woman. Now, somehow, some way, she had to go to the hospital, I think, because there was a big laceration on her forehead. But number one, you're presumed innocent on that. However, this is clear the nature of the offense, which is assault on a family member, which is a sacred institution. So that's serious to be charged with. And the circumstances under which it were committed, that is, lady of the house is suffering uh, a severe laceration. So that works against you when we're talking about a bond. It kind of aggravates the situation. If the offense involves violence, that's what this is, uh, then that is working against you when we're talking about what this bond. The future safety of the victim is to be considered. Well, let me just say, after this happened, you were ordered not to go near a place, and there you are twice. You're caught once at 1 30 or so in the morning. That's putting her in harm's way. So that works against you. Criminal history. You have little uh, criminal history that the court is aware of. But I'm looking at this event that is described in August 12th of 21, where the same two parties here, uh, the complainants, stated that you assaulted her and then a, a uh, you were arrested apparently for family violence and the police, when searching you upon arrest, located diazepam in your front pocket. Were you prescribed that? Yes, sir. For what reason? Um, anxiety. Sir? Anxiety. Okay. My wife and I both quit drinking in 2015, and my doctor prescribes me. Okay, let me read this. It says, search incident to arrest resulted in locating a pill bottle labeled diazepam, five milligrams, in your front left shorts pocket. At the jail, the pill bottle was opened. Inside the pill bottle, a Ziploc bag containing orange round pills, A80. Those were amphetamines. I'm, well, that kind of works against the plan, doesn't it? This was all diazepam is supposed to prevent what amphetamine so does. My doctor and the, they all dismissed because my doctor prescribes me with Adderall for ADHD and diazepam for anxiety, and that was started in 2007. And my doctor uh, spoke with the district attorney, and that was all dismissed. Oh, okay. I, I apparently. I've represented to your honor that didn't we go forward. Yeah, we we did dismiss based upon some information, okay. and, and I, the, I looked it over. That, my... that that's kind of weird, but I, there's not anything. I'm gonna let the doctors deal with that. That's not I weird. looked it over. He is validly prescribed diazepam. I did. I just can't understand how amphetamine and diazepam are supposed to work together. I still have that issue as well, Judge, but okay. the office chose to dismiss it. All right. But let's get back to the elephant in the room. Uh, that was a place that was all found, recovered from you at the scene of an assault of this same lady. So we've got the future safety of the victim is a concern, especially in light of uh, you having a prior allegation of assault uh, in 2021, and then two uh, apparent violations of being caught at the scene of, of the house once at early in the morning when everybody's supposed to be asleep, and you are lurking about her home when you have a protective order, not only a particular protective order, but all general bond conditions, a state, no contact with the victim. That's what they all state, along with don't commit a crime, have no contact with the victim. And 
being at her house, your house, whatever, when you have a protective order against you at one o'clock in the morning where she is, you're having contact with her that is violating the conditions of bond. And in addition, the defendant's conformity with previous bond conditions are to be considered according to court decisions. Well, that doesn't look good for you with the cutting of the GPS device and the uh, it being redundant, the I'm not going to follow the protective order and I'm going to go contact her nonetheless. And then the GPS, let's just say this, we'll add one final thing. You're up in Dallas County, I guess, or Tarrant County, but you're supposed to be in Jefferson County or wherever you are, your home. And uh, you're out of the county and then you're cutting off the GPS device, which are, again, blatant disregards for all attempts being made to try to keep everything at a status quo so that there's no interference between you and her until we can get this resolved peaceably. Um, I think I've said what I've had to say uh, and the court's not real happy with this and it's, you know, shame on us uh, the second time. Shame on you the first time. But the court doesn't really have much of a choice here because you have showed you'd have blatant disregard for the court's orders. I would just refer to the order. I'm sorry. I mean, how many times did you violate the order? I mean, and and really uh, taking off the GPS device. <laughs> you're saying that's not that's not a violation of the court order. It was. Okay. I, I didn't understand that after the 90 days, I thought it was up. I've never been in trouble, sir. I'm sorry. Never been in trouble. Well, you got, no, no. Don't say that. You Something had, there was some probable cause affidavit filed in 2021 and you had to deal with that somehow. It was not, it didn't go far, but you know, everybody treated it seriously. You must have been arrested in 21 and had to deal with that situation. So, you know, we take it seriously. But the lady's bleeding profusely from her forehead. Somebody's got to take care of her, if not her husband. My goodness. Richard, you're talking to a bunch of people. Your people here have been married. Uh, and I, no, never there's, been. it's clear you don't tr treat your spouse like this. That's, you're supposed to, if, if you never treat, you. if you, Treat someone you proclaim, expressly proclaim to love. How would you treat someone that you didn't like? Well, what you're saying in just defiance here is that she's lying about all of this. This isn't true. She was the complaint. She's lying about all of this. And we're not supposed to treat your violations of the protective order and bond conditions seriously. Do I have that about right? May I say one thing? My entire life, my entire career, I'm the founder of Epic Healthcare. I take care of medically fragile children. I'm the first and only company that does that. I took them home from the NICU with a ventilator. I'm the founder of Epic Healthcare, which is now nationwide. And I take care of kids that don't have a leg implant. I would never harm anyone. And I'm not saying that I did not do wrong with what I, I didn't understand the seriousness of it because I've never been in trouble, but that's no excuse. It's me being an idiot, but I would never hurt anyone. No, no, it's, that's it's, my whole life. No, I've no, helped. No, no, it's the defiance of the court orders Understood. that we're that talking about happen. now. That will never happen again. And it shouldn't happen the first time. No, it should not happen. Would, shame on me next time. It'll never, it happens a, it'll another never time. Happen again. Shame on me. I, I help and heal. I'm a Sir, healthcare. you had okay. I've taken care of sick babies from day one, my whole life. Okay, what does that have to do with utter defiance of the court's orders? I was absolutely in the wrong. I did not understand, and that's my fault. What is it you didn't understand? Thou shalt not uh, take off 
surreptitiously the GPS monitor so we can't monitor where your whereabouts are. Thou shalt not have contact with the complainant when you're caught twice, once at one o'clock in the morning. My goodness, where are you? Why aren't you in Jefferson County? You're out and about. That's what the GPS is all about. So we can monitor you're up in a, in the airport. You know, right there, can you jump on a plane and take off for wherever? I mean, let's talk about those things. Those are the orders that I'm talking about that are that you're so do let me ask you this. The the moment before you cut off the GPS device, and if I'd have asked you, are you going to follow these terms and conditions of probation pro, uh, of bond and not violate them? What would you have told me right before you did that? What would, I have what would you have told me? If I'd have been right there and, and miraculously appeared, are you about to violate your conditions of probation, uh, of bond and, and, and cut off the GPS device? My understanding was incorrect. I thought that the GPS was up after 90 days. I called the company that monitored it. And they did not answer and they did not call me back. So you thought what you do is you go to Home Depot, get a cutting device and cut it off and I'm, and, I'm sure. and cut it off I'm and needed, destroy it. I need a poor judgment and made a mistake. And I violated the being order. at her house at happen. one o'clock in the morning. The moment before you did that, if I have asked you, are you going to violate these conditions of bond? What would you have told me then? What's it? Sir, I was not at the house. Sir, the police say there, there you are. They say you walked into the, you were in, a, <laughs> opened a window. I was at the house the other time, but not the first time. Oh, oh, okay, that other time. What are you doing in there? You went through a window. I didn't go through a window. I was there. My wife was not there, and the police. I my car was stolen from the driveway, and I had a police officer Sorry. come and pick me up, and he took me to the bank. So that I could get, because uh, my wallet was in the car. And so I uh, then came home and my wife had come home and she told me um, that the protective order was still valid. And so then uh, I was arrested because I did go to the house. But that was on August 28th, sure. which was about a month after they found you close to the house at 123 on July 23rd. I was on the at the intersection of Coburn Drive and Potter Drive. Where's the house from there, from that intersection? How far is that? A quarter of a mile. A quarter of a mile? Yes. I'm going to, a quarter of a mile. You're saying that under oath to me. I'm saying it was. I'm going to ask the district attorney's office if you'd be so kind to clear that up. I want a, uh, the most direct route possible between that house and that intersection. I'd like uh, to know what the distance might be. I'm and, checking for, uh, see if I've got an officer's report for you, Your Honor, so you can look at that as well. And in all fairness, Judge, his uh, defense attorney does have. Uh, the discovery on all these matters. Mr. Says, Reynolds is the attorney the, record. Here in this statement, the defendant is prohibited from going 200 feet of the residence listed. And I believe he was approximately within 200 feet. How would he know that? I mean, they're familiar with this. I want to know exactly uh, what the distance is. He says under oath a quarter of a mile. This whole thing's going to rest on that. Oh, not, but for a large part. We're going to see if you're bloviating or being frank, you would know you lived there. You lived there. You would know exactly how far things are. I'd be shocked if it's a quarter of a mile, but it might be. I'm trying to pull it. Google that. This, Google is that. The, this is the address here. The question is, where are you supposed to be at 123 in the morning? I'm I just drove into town and was going to the hotel. I, I had stayed at the, what hotel? I stayed at the Holiday Inn on Eleventh Street. I came into town and came in with my. Car, I went down Feeling from Major, and then I went over. I got pulled over and pulled over over those tracks by the park there. 
And I went, and that's what I was taking to jail. I, I was staying at the Holiday Inn, which I have the uh, uh, hotel says records. You were within uh, 20, 200 feet of the residence. I, I'm curious how that, well, how they determined that. Well, they've got statements here from the complainant that he was not only driving that car, but he entered the home on two different occasions on that day, Judge. So that, that they, they may be relying on that, but I'm looking to get, answer your question. Give me one second, John. Um, My wife is in the mental hospitals in September or October. She's struggling. It's her fault? I know. I said she's struggling. Uh, she, it, this is all her fault? Absolutely not. Okay. According to this report, the um, the car where he was found was at the intersection of Coburn and Potter Drive. And I believe Mr. Boyd's checking that distance yes. for us, Chair. And again, I'm looking for more information, Judge. This is the house location pulled up on Google Maps. Where's the house? Here. The uh, yellow this, pin, Your Honor. This is Coburn here, and that's Potter. So it's not even not even a city block, Judge. It's not even a city block. Do you dispute? Do you want to look at that? You would know. I know. I, I mean, you live there. You want to look at that and I tell me again? That's I was, a, not, I was not with him. You're but, interrupting but, me, Mr. Reynolds. You must really be dominant in your environment no, sir. because you just interrupted me again. You have it. You, you you seem to be a bully, like you want to dominate the conversation. You get a chance to be heard. I don't know how many times I've I told you, please don't interrupt, and I told you why. You you want to bully your way through things. That is clear. The overhead map. I ran a quarter mile in, in track, so I know what a quarter mile is. Four hundred forty yards. That's not 440 yards from that intersection to that house. But without that information, you tried to tell me otherwise. You lived there. You knew better than that. You need to be frank with this court. And it's obvious what we're going to do is whatever you say under oath, we've got to verify it. You're not believable. No wonder you're in the mess you're in. All right. Anything else to add on this? Yes, I believe he's been in jail for probably six weeks. Been in jail for six weeks. Uh, he's he's certainly not complete for six weeks. It's just okay. almost six weeks. Um, Since he, January 29th, to be exact, yeah. Judge. Thank you. Uh, He's never had the full experience for the court about the seriousness of the bonds, uh, although he's had notice of them. I, I believe he would indicate to the court that he would certainly, that he does certainly understand the seriousness of the case and the seriousness of adhering to the bond conditions. If he would do that, he's asking the court to. Set a reasonable bond. If his bond was 60, I think that uh, doubling the bond to 120 with the uh, prior bond conditions would be reasonable. What anything you want to add, sir? I just wanted to say that I'm sorry. And I would just request requested my attorney that I just want to be able to provide for my family, my kids. And I will absolutely stay away from anything. I will abide by every single order. You were supposed to do that before. Yes, sir. To the utmost 1,000%, that was even a number. I, I, I just wanted to say. I have your word on that? Yeah. My word, my soul. You mean like, like that location is over a quarter of a mile from that inner, from your house to that intersection? Is that word? I will buy by every order that you make, and I will not bury once. 
just be, just be, uh, everybody has situations to deal with up here. Court can't be accurate when it's basing its decision on false statements. And you have a lot to lose by not impressing this court that you can be trusted just to make simple answers to questions that we catch you at. And that doesn't help you because if you're on bond, we have to rely on your actions and and your word. And you're not good for it based upon this hearing. What is the state asking for? Judge, I want to ask that things stay the way they are. I just And the reason why is because I can't imagine any conditions that we haven't already tried that have already failed. And I've got to stand up here and advocate for the victim's safety. And, um, I, and honestly, I can't even think of a situation where I've had a defendant pr previously charged with a GPS where we've caught them cutting it off, sitting in an airport where they could have gone somewhere. And I don't care what this man says about that. Those conditions are... Or it's just frightening. I have had one other scenario where we had uh, somebody cut off their GPS, and luckily we knew that they were threatening the individual, and we we caught them actually coming to the house. I don't want this to be the next person I talk about like that. All right, the court is going to uh, agree with the state. Uh, you are not trusted. You are not worthy of a bond condition under what has happened here at this hearing. You have been caught making false statements. You have been caught while on bond, not uh, attempting to make contact with the victim on two occasions, one at one o'clock in the morning. You left the area and were caught removing the GPS device in Dallas County. And that is another uh, violation of your earlier bond conditions. And we are talking about an assault case here, a first degree felony where you were looking at life imprisonment as a potential punishment. And we are looking at two, at least two prior assault uh, cases uh, in uh, involving uh, a previous assault in 2021 of this victim. And then while on bond conditions, twice being caught in climbing through the window of the residence at, of, a, uh, of a location where there was a protective order on August 28th of 23rd, June 23rd, 23, you were in the loca lo location within 200 feet, according to the police, when you say it's more than a quarter of a mile. <clears throat> and that was at 123. Then we got the occasion of the cutting off of the GPS. What date did that? That's on January 10th of 2024 is when that occurred. <clears throat> And again, let's don't forget that the defendant was uh, the victim is suffering a stabbing to her forehead, which resulted in uh, a severe laceration, and that is serious in its own right. It is obvious, uh, Mr. Price, there is some, you have some fixation here about making contact with this lady and we got to freeze the action and we've given you more than ample 
opportunities to show whether you can follow the rules. And on three separate occasions, you have made serious violations of these bond conditions, which one being we now, after you cut off your GPS, you were out there in Dallas County. We didn't know where you could be and you could go anywhere on the planet and we wouldn't know. And then the other two instances are you're making contact, attempting to make contact with her and the threat of her safety is obviously clear that that you can't be trusted under these circumstances. The court finds that you will be held without bond and until we can resolve this case, unless further information is presented that the court is always open to hear. What do we want to do next? What's your next event? I guess we want to set it for announcement. When? How long? How long do you need to prepare for an announcement? Central office. office. Okay. Uh, three weeks. Two, three weeks. Yes. Sir. Done. Done. If earlier, if there's something y'all can do, he's never he's never been convicted before. He's eligible for probation. He's eligible. For All right. Probation. If there's something y'all can y'all figure out, y'all can fashion that uh, everybody can agree with, uh, then I'm happy to move to get this thing jumped up to this uh, on a docket as soon as possible and uh, to get something to move forward on this, not just allow him to language in jail. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll try to expedite the case. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let me know. Uh, we've said it for three weeks, but if you do something sooner than that, okay. we're, all, we're open for business. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But the most important thing, again, uh, Mr. Price is right now, look, your rights are important. The safety of that lady is what we all worry about. And you, you are saying you're concerned about that too, but you have to show it. You did, you're not putting it into practice. That's a, a parent. And you got to be able to trust your word. Okay. Yes, sir. We are in the sense.